Nick Nurse will continue with his new topic. We are looking forward to hear new experience, new knowledge, and everything best for us, of course. Nick, please, floor is yours. Hello again, thank you. Hope everybody um, had a good, uh, good lunch and is uh, having a good uh, time. I'm gonna talk a little bit today about um, changing defenses, uh, in-game adjustments. Uh, I, I would like to say this too, one of my favorite parts of this morning was the one question that I had. Okay, again, I want to know what, I want to hear from you what you would like to hear from me. So, please, if you have a question, raise your hand. Ask it. I would love to hear your questions, okay? Now, I'm going to jump right in and start. I got a couple things on the video to show you, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. But I want to tell you, I guess... Um, I guess this is where changing defensive started for me. I, when I was, uh, let's see, 1995, 1995, I left the University of South Dakota in South Dakota, in Vermilion, South Dakota, to go back to England to coach a team called the Birmingham Bullets in Birmingham, England. I was uh, 27 years old at the time. Um, and here's the story. The story is, is that the team called the London Towers was the best team in England, best team in the British Basketball League. The year before, they, they, they have... Uh, four trophies each year in England the league the playoff champion the national cup and uh, competition called the trophy um, as well and London Towers won all the all four of the trophies I think they had a league record of 34 wins and two losses um, the year before that they won the championship the year before that they won the championship I think about four or five years in a row before I got there so they were the team to beat they were going to win everything everybody predicted them to win everything you, you, know, what, you know what I'm talking about plenty of, plenty of leagues around the world that has a team that has a lot of the best players Okay. so I was a young energetic hungry coach and I figured if I wanted to win the championship, I was going to have to beat the London Towers. Okay? So I lived in a hotel then up in Birmingham. It's about 150 kilometers uh, north of London. But it was a pretty easy drive down the motorway to where the London Towers played. And... Every night I wasn't playing and they were, I'd jump in my car, make that ride down, and I'd sit right in the front row to watch them play. Over and over again, I became, everybody knew me there. I, they, they'd just come in and I'd, they'd bring me, sit me down in front. Over and over and over, I kept coming down to watch the London Towers play. The point that I learned is I'd be there and I was watching, I'd see that they had two players that pretty much drove everything. They scored all the points and they assisted. They either scored themselves or passed to somebody who scored. Two guys had the ball. They did all the creating for points or assists. Okay? So I kept watching this time and time and time again and I kept thinking to myself, I got to come up with a way to stop these two guys. Okay? So it finally came our turn to play them. And I decided I was going to, I made up this 
made up this defense. We called it ZMT. Okay? Zoner, Manner, Trapper. So we had two guys play zone, two guys play man, and one person was a trapper. Everybody understand? Okay, I'll tell you what I want to do though. I want to show you. Okay? I want to show you. So I want, can I get about, can people come down to this court easy? Can I get about seven people to come down here real quick just to be demonstrators? Real, yeah, come on. We won't, it won't be, won't be much. I just want to show you what I'm talking about. Okay? Zoner, man or trapper, oh, the players, okay. Zoner, man or trapper. I know we got some stuff, I promise I'll try not to hurt any of the equipment or anything. Okay. Okay, hang on. I need, I need seven. I need seven, just two more. Okay? Guys, how you guys doing? Good? Good, great to see you. My name's Nick. You guys okay? All right, man. I need two more people. Come on. Yes, you. Yes, yes, okay. And I'll just show you why seven is the important number. I know I can only have five out here at a time, but it's going to feel like seven. Just kidding. No. Okay. So here we go. We're going to take this guy right here. You're going to be our trapper. And you're going to start right here on what we will call the nail. So we're going to defend this basket. So the ball's coming at us this way. So you're playing right there. Okay? Yeah, you don't have to, yeah, eagle, nice. You learned that from this morning? Eagle, good. Coachable. Uh, give me two big guys. One here. Right here in this block. In this block here. Okay? All right, now, you four, come with me here. Okay. You four, just stand here for just a second. We're going we're gonna to get you guys into the game in a second. Okay, so here's, here's, here's what the, the zone looked like. Okay? It's kind of like a triangle in two. Okay? But two things. So let's say you two guys, you guys are coming off the bench. Okay. You're player number six and you're player number seven. You guys are starting. So you're guarding... The guy's name was Steve Bucknell. He played at North Carolina. He played for the Lakers, and then he played for the London Towers. And you're guarding Danny Lewis. He's the other guy, okay? And your, your job for three minutes is to nose to nose, full court. Don't let him catch the ball no matter what. Just as hard as you can play, and then subs after three minutes. You two guys are going to sub out. And you two guys are going to sub in. Okay, so three minutes. Then they're coming back in, and you're coming out. Okay? So no touches. No touches if those guys can do a tremendous job. If, for some reason, they do get the ball on half court here. So come here. You, uh, you, play, you play me. Can I have a basketball? Yeah. The cameraman throwing passes. All right. Hold that microphone for a second. leaves his home base and he traps him and as soon as he, get, and he goes right back okay and then three minutes you're out three minutes you're in three minutes you're out three minutes you're in. okay couple more things couple more things don't leave don't leave you stay here protect the rim anybody drives you play defense any shots you two guys have to rebound okay Stay in here, protect the rim, rebound. There. It's not yours. You can stay there. It's okay. We're gonna give that, we're gonna give them that. Okay? 
So I'll put up my slide in a second. You guys just do me a favor. Just go back down there for just a second. We're just going to talk for a little bit, and then I'm, I might bring you back out here. Okay, so I'm going to put up my slide in a second. And one of the things that I believe is defense is take and give. You've all heard the, heard the phrase give and take. You've got to give and take a little bit. Turn it around. We've got to take and give. So we've decided we're going to take something away, those two players, right? We understand we have to give up something. To do that, we have to give up something. We can't have that drastic a scheme and expect there never to be open shots, okay? So what happened? What happened in the game? <laughs> it's great. So, of course, they come down and we're make, they, they, they don't shoot. No, no, zero shots at halftime. Bucknell had zero shots. Danny Lewis had zero shots, zero points. Of course, <laughs> everybody else was, ma was making three-pointers, making three-pointers, making three-pointers. And we're down about 10 points at the half. I think it was nine points at the half, halftime. So I go into the locker room, and I say to the team, Let's call it off. Let's stop. I don't like it. It's not working. And they stop me and say, no, 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 no. Let's keep it going. He's, those guys, coach, those guys won't keep making those shots. In the fourth quarter, they won't keep making those shots. So we went back out there. We put it on them. And they were right. We ended up winning the game 76-72. Danny Lewis had zero points and zero shots. Steve Bucknell had one point. We fouled him once, and he made one free throw when he was in the bonus, and we won 76 to 72. Okay? More, more to the story. Yes? <laughs> Good question. Did we try this against Harden? Great question. Can I come back to it in about four minutes? Because, yeah, but it wasn't the ZMT. It was another one. Okay? <laughs> really great question, and I can't wait to talk about that one either. Okay. So roll by another two, two months goes by, and we have to play them again. We have to play them again. And we run out ZMT on them again. And we win again. Okay, this time even we're 80 to 72, even, even more. We beat them, by, beat them by eight. Playing out the season, playing out the season, my team is really starting to play good, play good, play good. We end up finishing third in the, in the league. We win the first round of the playoffs. We go to Wembley for the semifinals. We win the semifinals. We go to the finals, and who do we play? London Towers, right where we wanted to be. The team we knew we had to beat in the championship. We played Saturday night in the semifinals. We had to play Sunday in the finals, so no prep time. Walk in the locker room, talk to the players, hey, ZMT? And they say, nope, let's guard them. They had grown their man-to-man -man defense so much, they had so much confidence in it, they wanted to go guard a man-to-man, -man, and they did. And won the championship, which was... Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, you guys are good. Thanks a lot. Can we give them a hand? We're, we're, I might bring you back. You guys can go sit down for a second. Go ahead. And I might, but I might bring you back for the James Harden, James Harden one. Thanks, guys. Anyway, I just think that's an important story because, again, um, and and I'm gonna keep talking about this, but. La Coach Laszlo here and I obviously are, are very good friends and we're spending a lot of time talking here this weekend and and you know the British Basketball League isn't a very isn't a very good league right but there's two guys myself and Chris Finch who you'll probably see here someday in the future talking to you that are both NBA head coaches we spent a number of years coaching in that league it doesn't matter 
we were we were trying really hard to to learn our craft and we had games and players to do it and competition to do it like you know I I, I said to coach today I feel like Eric Spolstra from the Miami Heat is my is my Chris Finch right now even though Chris Finch is in the NBA thank God he's in the West right but Spolstra and I would like go at it like crazy like you know every time we every time we play Miami it seems like they're on a 10 game winning streak and and we go in there and beat them and then they turn around and kick our ass the next time and then we go at it again it's just like it's like this incredible competition but my point is is that I was really in a laboratory experimenting the hell did I have to lose the Birmingham Bullets hadn't had a winning season in 20 years so what's it matter if I go in there and run the ZMT well we our team believes in it they start playing really hard they start chasing every rebound they start making shots they start believing they they wanted to do it in the end so it, it enabled me to just continue to test and test and test and test things right even even one whole season there in England I full court pressed the entire season I went and talked to all the college coaches that were full court pressing got all their drills watched all their practices and we we pressed the whole season because I wanted to learn about pressing it was interesting I don't believe in it but it was still a learning experience for me and it got me to the point of again coach coach Bob I'm sorry you know Steph Curry got me to the point of the box and one in the NBA finals and Again, some of you that I've talked to while here, you'll have to hear this, these stories again, but that was just in my gut. And what I saw, we'd never practiced it. We'd never even talked about it as possibly something we were going to do. And I just, in that time out, I looked out there and I can't really remember what happened, but I knew Steph was the only star on the floor at the time. And... I said to Kyle Lowry, who was my kind of my engine and my leader, I said, I think, I think a box and one's what we should do here. I said, we'll take Freddie Van Fleet and we'll put him nose to nose on Curry and you go here and Danny will go here and Kawhi will go here and Gasol will go here and sit in the box and zone. And he said, I love it. And he took it into the timeout and told all the other guys, we're going to play box and one. And they went out there and did it. And of course, Van Fleet stole the first two, two steals or something right away. So, again, now they're getting confidence. And we didn't even win the game that night. We got beat. But it set kind of an interesting psychological tone that we weren't afraid of Golden State, the mighty, mighty Golden State. We weren't afraid. And we thought we, would, they were, gonna, we were gonna pull out anything and anything we had to do to beat them. So psychologically it became a big thing. And we ran it again in game six for a long stretch, and we did win game six, and that was pretty cool too, All right? Okay. All right, back to Harden. <clears throat> Not quite as good an ending, right? But so James Harden is on a, uh, he's on a run of I don't know how many games, uh, 8, 10, 12, 14, in the 50s, 50, he's got like, 12 straight 50 point games coming into coming into playing us and uh, my referee guy and he was shooting 24 free throws a night <laughs> right he's shooting 24 free throws a night because he dribbling down and anybody gets near him he grabs their arm he you know, gets up underneath him pulls the ball and they call it on the defense all the time and he goes to the free throw line and I decided you know what I wasn't going to watch that shit. I, wasn't, I didn't want to stand there on the sideline and watch it. I wasn't going to let, watch him score 55 points and shoot 25 free throws in my gym. I wasn't. So we did a little bit different. We changed it to a diamond. Okay? We changed it to a diamond. So we put uh, one guy here. We put two wing guy, one guy on the wing there, one guy on the wing there. A little bit harder to do this, and we put one, one here to be a rim protector. Obviously, we put one on him man-to-man. -man. And, again, same theory. As soon as he got across half court, this guy left his spot, 
went out and double teamed him tried to get back and kind of the same thing happened except for they made a bunch of shots all their, all, he kept throwing, he got off the ball he threw it ahead they, they made a bunch, we hung in there we didn't shoot that well we kept going, kept going he finally shook free a couple times late in the game like he had, he had some free throws and he had like 7 points and then he made a couple threes back to back late in the game, ended up with like 15 or 18 but at least I didn't have to watch we got beat so we do lose sometimes <laughs> and, so, and some of my ideas they don't work sometimes but I'm glad I'm still glad I did it but really good question man to, to spot that one still glad I did it All right. Um, any other questions real quick before I keep moving anyone yep nope okay um, before I go too close to this okay <laughs> Come with me. I just want to show you a couple things. Okay, this is good. Look at how, look at how good she is. What's your name? Anna? Wait, I'm going to come over here where I can hear you. Ondale? Can we give a little round of applause for Ondale? You guys can see all my, uh, all my tabs up there. I got a few emails. Listen, I already said number one. I just wanted to, I just wanted to, I was going through some stuff today, and I think this is from a, um, I think this is from uh, something I did when I interviewed for the head coaching job, and I just wanted to, to, to make sure we go through these, because, I mean, I think at one time in my life, I would have probably considered a box and one, or a triangle and two, or a ZMT as a junk defense right that didn't have much value but I've, I've certainly changed my way I mean I grew up in an era you, many of you probably as well is like man to man man to man defense is the only way right accountability toughness and there's, some, there's a lot of truth to that but I think if you don't have as much talent or you're trying to beat somebody maybe a lot better than you that you can throw things in there. So anyway, I'm just going to go through a couple of these. I already said this one. It's take and give. And you, you can't overreact to what you give up. You almost, you're, almost, you're almost celebrating the stuff you give up because you tell your team, we're willing to live with these shots. Trust us. Over the course of 40 minutes or 48 minutes, we will win if we are okay with that. Okay? I love this too because I can just see in your eyes some of you hate junk defenses. <laughs> junk defenses. Some of you are really into it. I love it. And it's true. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a scale of either you love to coach this way or you don't. And I, and I love it. I love it. I think, uh, where's my Raptors guy up there? My Raptors guy up there. So just again, like, we went through a stretch. Uh, I, I think this was in 2020. We went through a stretch where we played the Clippers and Kawhi. We held Kawhi to seven. The next night we played the Lakers and we held LeBron to nine. Then two days later we flew to um, Golden State and we held Steph to five, six or five. And then we went to Portland and we held Dame Lillard to nine, all in one little road trip. And that's really, that's, that's like our guys were really good, man, to, to be able to do that. But again, it was just an emphasis of we were trying to take away their biggest strengths at all cost almost. Try to see if they could win without getting what they're always used to getting. And I think it puts pressure on teams. It makes them, usually the guys get mad, you know. I, I won't, some of them, I guess I can name some names, but <clears throat> some of them get really mad at me like, F you coach, are you going to let me play tonight while they're walking by? Why don't you let me play tonight, you know. And some of them, before the game even starts, comes over and say, coach, you going to double team me all night tonight? And I say, yep. And they say, okay, and they pass all night. They just make the right play all night. It doesn't bother them a bit. And some of them it really bothers. 
And usually when it really bothers them, it creeps into the rest of the team. It goes from there. Sorry, we're going back. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and I think I already talked about number two, too. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll read these out because I'm not sure if it's better translation or it doesn't matter. Uh, to be really good defensively it must be your force first priority. And I believe in you got to pay a daily price, right? Defense first and everything else next. We, we, we have a saying that defense daily develops defense. I stole that from... I stole that coach from Maury John. Belly button defense. You ever, you ever read the belly button defense book? Man, it's a little booklet. 1969, they went to the Drake University. They went to the Final Four, lost to UCLA by two. Defense daily develops defense. We really believe in that. Uh, number three, transition defense and rebounding. Really important, okay? A lot of high percentage baskets in transition. You got to try to take those away. A lot of high percentage baskets on offensive rebounds. You got to try to take those away. Just playing the numbers, those are the two most important things. Preventing fouling and protecting the rim are major priority. Again, this is, these are almost analytical statements without the numbers, right? Free throws are the highest points per possession. Rim shots are the next highest points per possession, so we're trying to take those away. Uh, the next thing we do is take away the corner three. Again, these are, these are analytical statements without the analytics. Uh, contesting shots and flushing is really important. We call, we call when we go out to challenge a guy that we know is shooting, flushing them off the line. Okay. Um, and it kind of... It kind of um, it kind of is a component of the rest of our defense. We play a lot of gap defense. So a couple things we really believe in. We believe in pressure in the, the heck out of the basketball. We don't stay off the ball much. We're almost always on the attack. Pressure, which means we get beat some. So our next phase of that is that the help guys are off in the gaps, ready to help, ready to stunt, ready to help till the guy gets recovered. That also create that that part of it creates a lot of kickouts, and so this guy's got to be ready to fly and what we call f flush the shooter off the line. Not sure where that came from, but we started using that word a long time ago and use it. Right? There's your gaps I was just talking about, and number ten. Um, Number 10 is um, doing a great job on personnel. What does that mean? Well, we, we in, sim in really simple terms, we try to limit touches for, for really good players. They can't, they can't score without the ball. If somebody loves to go right, um, who loves to go right? Jimmy Butler, for example, he loves to go right. We, don't, we try not to let him ever go right. Right, um, Steph loves to go left to shoot the three. We try not to let him go left. LeBron, every three he makes is a left through. So if we want to take away his threes, we press up on him and we push him into right, and we know he's coming downhill, and we got to send some help. So being able to really coach personnel is a lot of changing defenses. That's like changing defenses a lot. And that 2019 team... It wasn't like we're going from man to 2-3 to 1-3-1 to box one. It's boxing one. It's not really what it is. It's more changing coverages. What's an example? Um, they throw it in the post to, to um, DeMarcus Cousins, let's say, right? And we are going to double team him because we think he's a turnover. We think he's a turnover, so we want the turnover. So we put our scheme in. Let's just say we, I mean, we got about four or five ways we doubled the post. Let's just say we were coming from the nail. Like whoever's, whoever's guy was over. As soon as it went in, we double from here. DeMarcus Cousins is in the low post. 
And yeah, we did turn him over. But Steve Kerr's really smart. And the next time out, he put him on the other, other block. And Mark, he just turned right and get away from the double team. So I'm not as smart, but I would say, okay, so now we're going to double him from underneath. We do a baseline trap, and he turned right into us, and we took it from him again. So it was kind of those kind of things, changing defenses, changing coverages, is kind of what's happening at the fast pace. And, again, like that 2019 team was, they were on a level that I've never seen IQ and intellectually. Like they could, like literally, as the play was going down, I could yell out, you know, base X instead. And right on the fly, boof, and they'd do it. And there, there was the turnover, like incredible. Or they talk about it at a free throw, you know, how to switch a, a pick and roll coverage. And instead of switching, we do a lot of pre switching the matchups. Um, what does that mean? So we're in a timeout. We know they're going to. Uh, Chris Middleton and Giannis. We know that some type of action between those two guys is coming, and it's probably going to be Giannis with it in the end. So instead of having to play any coverage, we make sure and put our best defender. We put Kawhi on Middleton. He'd run the action. He'd run the play. Here come Giannis, and Kawhi would switch on to Giannis. So those switching matchups, switching coverages on the fly, et cetera, are almost the most important part of changing defenses. What else have we run? Well, uh, I'm messing around with a 1-3-1 one, one right now. It's, it's not going that good. It's not going that good, but I'm, I'm really like committed to playing this 1-3-1 one, one that isn't like a typical 1-3-1. One, one. <laughs> I've got a, I've got a for, for Canada, I've got two, I got a 7-3 young kid and a 7-4 or 5 young kid. And in FIBA, as you know, Mr. Referee, as you know, you can stay in the lane, don't have to leave. So I want to park one of those 7-3 or 7-4 guys underneath the basket and not have a move. So we're going to not give up any shots at the rim. So I'm playing a 1-3-1 one, one where I'm trying to not have that big cover anything. So basically the wings are here. The wings are trying to take away any corner passes. So they're playing really wide. Anyway, it's a 1-3-1. One, one. Like I said, it's not going that great, but I'm, I'm still playing with it. I play with it in this, at our summer league team, use it this summer. We, we did run it. We just had two Canadian national team games. Um, um, this, uh, what was it, June? And we ran it in both those games against the uh, Dominican and Virgin Islands. And they, it's okay. It was okay. It's going to let uh, the 7-3 guy play because he's a problem he's a problem on the offensive glass and he's a problem protecting the rim and I want to I want to play him and I don't want him I don't want every time I go out there just let teams put him in screen and rolls so I just want to put him at the basket um, we play a little bit of two three zone as well now and my thoughts on that are it's what what am I what am I switching what am I switching out of man-to-man -man and going to a 2-3 zone for in a game? Well, usually the game's going really bad. Like whatever the rhythm of the game is, we don't have it. The other, the other team's in rhythm and we're not. So we switch and get out of it and a lot of times it changes the rhythm completely. That's one reason, just to change the rhythm of the game might be three possessions and it might end up going 13 possessions depending on what happens. But a lot of times it's a good rhythm changer. If I got somebody in foul trouble that I need to protect, right, I can, I can hide them in a certain part of the zone. So I'll go to zone for that. I used to do that a lot in the minor leagues because I, I had a point guard that used to play 48 minutes every night, played every minute of every game. So if he ever got in foul trouble, we'd end up going to zone. Um, and we'll do it a lot out of timeouts. And you'll, I think you're seeing that. If you guys follow the NBA now, you'll see that a lot out of timeouts. Now a lot of teams come out and play zone. Why are they doing that? Well, they're taking away the coach's draw-up play. Timeout coaches over there drawing up this great play against man-to-man -man to come out and see a zone, and, and they're out. And conversely, that's continuing to build 
Coaches are starting to drop two plays, one for man, one for zone. So we're all kind of continuing to evolve and keep playing chess with each other. Any questions? Yes. Here, okay. Hi, coach. Nice, nice to hear you. Uh, you have a, a, a young guy who not really like defense, but he's talent. How do you make him interested in defense? Thank you. Okay, let me see if I answered that question. It's just kind of like, kind of like the question over here. You got a coach who doesn't want to fall. Got a guy who doesn't want to play defense. How do you make him play defense? Oh man. Well, well, it's a really good question, and here, here's, here's my thoughts on it. I, I don't know if I know for sure. But here's, here's my thoughts. One, we, we demand it, right? Like we demand, like everything we do kinda, kinda rolls down to defense first. So you, you, come, to, you come out to our practice and we, we literally, you're gonna, you're gonna start getting in your eagle and you're gonna start moving and doing two on two shell drill, even if it's for 30 seconds. We're gonna make a point, and then we get into our ball pressure drill. We don't do a ton of, you know, rah rah rah, shell drill, shell drill. We just hit, 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 and then we're gonna go two on two on two, um, screen and roll, side to side, side to side, side. So anyway, my point is, we really emphasize it right from the start. We just let you know that we are here to play defense. Okay, like we're here to do it. Then this is a, and this this is a good question because it kind of leads you into. This is a little bit longer one. Can you guys see this? This is part of, this is an older one, but this is part of the accountability thing. Okay, look at, look at if you can, look at the column called ball pressure. Okay? That was what I was talking about earlier. So Kyle Lowry had 33 chances. Wait a minute. He had 33 chances to pressure the ball, and he did it 29 times. So this, this is what sits up on the screen when our players come in the next day after a game. This is what's, well, they're filtering in, sitting down in their chairs, no coaches are there yet. This is what's on the screen, okay? And that's a, that's a ball pressure percentage of 88% for him. And he's gonna sit down next to DeMar DeRozan, and he's gonna say, you only got 76, I got 88. You need to get yours up a little bit, Damar. Like, seriously, that's kind of what they do. I mean, maybe they tease each other a little bit more, or swear at them or whatever, if they're really mad, right? But this is what we ask them to do. These are the things we grade, and these are the things we show them after every game. And what usually happens is this. Again, it's a bit of a process once you get it started, but now, now our guys know we play defense. Like, you're not really coming to us and not playing defense anymore, right? Like, you're just not. It's not, it's not who we are, and it's not, not what we're doing, and we're going to try to show you how to do it. We're going to give you, hopefully, great game plans so you get excited about stopping some of these players. We try to make them look good. And that's what they want. They want a great plan, right? Um, they just forgot what I was going to say about the accountability thing. It's pretty good numbers there. Low post, rebound, contesting. We've, we've cut that down to from seven to like four now, sometimes five. We'll go, we'll go four of them again this year. But we're mostly concerned with ball pressure, your, gap, your eagles, right? So that means you're in your gap with length, your shot contesting, and your what we call tag and pursue for a rebound. You got you to gotta hit somebody before you, um, before you go on. Answer your question? Answer? Think? I mean, yeah. I think, that's, I think that's why we play good defense. I mean, I'm, again, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, 
a whole bunch of other intangibles like Lowry set a tone a lot of years ago. He's, a, he's just a tough dude, and he competes, and that rubs off onto the next guy. I mean, you know, we got some culture built up with some guys that that – that want to that want to play it, and I'm just trying to think. Some of those guys on that list didn't didn't want to play it. There's some guys on that list that didn't want to play it. They're not on that list anymore. <laughs> that's one thing to say. Okay, that's good. Anybody else? Yes. It was you. Order. That was good. I was going to show that clip next anyway, so thanks for that question. Hi, Coach. Uh, so which was your uh, most common in your career? You adjust... Hello? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so you adjust your system to your players, or you build or pick the players to your system? Your whole career? Yeah, it's a really good, another really good question that I'm not sure what the answer is. But I'll give you my thoughts. Okay, so I think that I think that you would like to say, no, I think I think we, I don't know. You'd like to say that, like maybe in Coach uh, Bob's case, that he has a system and he goes recruits guys that fit his system. And I don't know if you do that or not. Sometimes you you try to probably and probably get some and some you probably don't get and you try to get them to fit or you tweak your system a little bit so th there was a time so so I had a couple like amazing stops along my career one of them well two humongous ones for me okay one is when I finally left Britain uh, they started we we started from scratch a team a, a NBA development league team from uh, from Nowhere we we convinced some guys in my home state of Iowa to buy a team and let me be the coach. Okay, <laughs> they kept asking me, what, "What do you want out of it?" I said, "I want to be the coach." They said, "Okay." So um, that was a huge move for me. I, I don't think I ever would have got anywhere without that move. And then the next move I made, we we went four years there. We won a D League championship my fourth year. Um, the Houston Rockets wanted uh, me to be the head coach of their D-League team. You think, well, why would I leave my home state and go work for them? We just beat them in the finals, actually, but and, and most of you probably know this, too, that the Rockets were kind of in the forefront of the analytics. They were kind of the money ball people of basketball, right? And I was just interested in learning about it, right? So went down there and they were like they they first thing they do is they meet with you they gave me the job first of all and then they meet with you and they they start laying out all this stuff for 25 years they got all this data blah blah blah, blah. these are these are the shots we need to take and how many of them from where all this kind of stuff to win consistently when this is winning offense and I say okay and they say well can you create a system that gets these shots Again, I say, I don't know, but I can try. It makes sense to me, right? And, and we'll, again, we'll get to some of that. You, you've heard about all the, the percentages, you know, the free throw, the, the rim, the corner three, the, the arc three, and stay away from the non-paint two. You've probably heard that a lot on television or whatever, right? So I went to creating a system for that. And what am I talking about? Well, I'm trying to answer your question. So basically... We had a whole bunch of guys that we wanted to be able to drive the ball really hard to the rim, and if they couldn't get all the way to the rim, kick it out to a guy that played just like them who caught and shot a three-pointer. So we, we were literally trying to build the player's skills to that system, finish lots of layups, like, like finishing drills like you couldn't believe because we had to we had to get to the rim get to the rim get to the rim get to the rim and then we were going to shoot a high volume of threes and we were going to shoot no well very few non-paint twos okay so again I'm trying to answer your question with that was the system that my bosses wanted me to run to t experiment so we tried to 
mold the players into that. Okay, so then like fast forward, like, like, well, let's I'll talk about some of the issues. So some of the issues, like, these guys thought I was nuts. These these are good college players. You know, played at North Carolina, Duke, Kansas, Kansas State. They're coming to me. They're rookies, and they're and I'm telling them, hey, I mean, here's what practice is. They come running out here, and we literally have lines, layups, 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 layups. Blow the whistle. Boom. Threes, 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 threes. Layups, 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 threes. No one could ever, at any time, take a shot in non-paint two, ever, in practice. Again, we were just trying to, we were experimenting. We were trying to emphasize, make a point. But these guys were going crazy. Coach, my game. This is my game. Right here, boom, 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 boom. Right here, right here, coach. This is my game. And we'd say, well, you're not going to make those. Yeah, but I can make them. Yeah, they do, and they make them at like. You know, 35%, just enough to get beat, right? So, and again, I'll just tell you the story since I'm telling lots of stories today. Um, we play the first game, and things go pretty good, but we have something like 14 guys pull up, take the shot, okay? Next day in film, we have all 14 of those shots on film, we show them and we just say, we're not shooting those shots. No big deal, just stating facts. Show the next one, we're not shooting those shots. We're not shooting those shots, okay? Go to the next game, it's pretty much the same. We have about 11 or 12. Go to the film, we're not shooting that, we're not shooting that, we're not shooting. By about the fourth game, whenever a player shot one of those, the other four guys that were on the court with him would say, stop shooting those. We're not shooting those. And again, we created a little bit of a self-policing accountability system, but we were firm on it. Okay? And you say, okay, we're not going to shoot any. Well, no. Listen. When the shot clock's running down, five, four, three, two, one, you got to shoot the ball. There's an exception. Right? When Kawhi Leonard wants to shoot one, you let him shoot the ball. Why? Because he makes 55% of them. If, if, you can make a, if you can make an effective field goal percentage of 54 or higher, have at it. Okay? Serge Ibaka, we let him shoot him? We sure did. Did he make 54%? No, he didn't. But if he got to take a 15 or 17 footer somewhere in the early part of the game, he'd, he'd usually make it. Then he'd block a shot. Then he'd block another shot. Then he'd make a three. If he came out and he just shooting threes, he'd miss it. He'd miss it. He'd start getting all caught up and he was missing his shots. So we'd get him a couple easy ones, right? So tons of, like the, the theory is, it's pretty strict, but there's a lot of little loopholes and areas that we can work with it. I don't know if I answered your question at all. Maybe a little bit in there somewhere. More, more or less. <laughs> a little bit in there Thanks somewhere. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Okay, good. How much time we got left here? Ten minutes? <laughs> uh, hello, Coach. Uh, my question is about uh, in-game adjustment. Uh -huh. uh, in your opinion, uh, during the game, uh, do you, when defense doesn't work well, uh, do you search first for better coverage or better matchup, or you change something in system? Usually, good, really good question. Usually, the first thing we do I is... I think, do you have some strategy about that or you just decide during the game? I don't know what's your idea about that. Yeah, usually, we're going to call timeout and we're going to politely ask them to do the coverage that we're trying to do a little harder <laughs> and a little yeah. better. Yeah. Before we, you know, sometimes we tell them, we don't know if the coverage is working or not. You're not even doing it well enough for us to judge, right? So sometimes we just have to play harder, play more physical, play tougher. And then sometimes we're wrong. We're wrong and we, and we have to switch it. I'm not saying we're wrong. Sometimes it just doesn't work. I mean, they got coaches too. They watch film too. You know, we play them. They think we're going to do the same thing again. They're, they're ready for us sometimes. So we do have to switch. Um, but on that, on that scale, I'd say we probably switch the, switch the coverage more than we do 
Uh, at, we ask them to play hard. We might switch a matchup. And then we'll probably switch a coverage. It's okay? It depends of situation. Yep, on and, the there are, and there's, a, there's a million of them. You know, there's, there's, there's a million of them. And I think, like, listen, I think that there's, there's some coaches, again, there's some coaches that say man-to-man, man-to-man, man-to-man. They might stick with the play harder, play harder, play harder. We're not switching the coverage, play harder. And I think there's some of those guys in the NBA that just believe that this is the way to do it and the only way it's going to be done and you got to do it better. We probably lean a little bit further away from that. We probably will will switch. And listen, we I think like like um, I think our guys give us a lot of feedback. Like when we're in walkthrough and and we say okay, they throw it over here and Jimmy Butler's got it here and they're gonna run a a, a small big double screen and we're gonna switch the first one and pin it on the side or, or whatever and, and our guys say no 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 we can't uh, we can't do that coach we can't switch that one we gotta you know we gotta play switch the second one or, or whatever they want to do and then I'll say something like I mean I think switching the first one's the right idea but I won't say that I'll say okay you guys can you guys that are involved in it right you guys that are involved in it I don't care which one you do. You just make sure you two talk it out and get it done. So it depends. You know, we got guys that are pretty experienced that, that can do that stuff. They can, the two guys involved can handle it, and it's maybe a little bit off the page of what our philosophy is or what the game plan is, but those two guys are they're getting it done getting a little gray area there it's okay answer your question okay all right i have one more if it's yeah, go ahead. no problem yeah two more if you want <laughs> just one more okay one more <laughs> uh this is uh, in europe i mean in fiba basketball uh one of defenses for us is making foul before yeah. bonus uh that's not the situation in nba so, can you give some comment on this? For us, making yeah, you don't foul know. is yeah. defense. I love it. So, you don't want to know why I'm doing this? Okay, when I was a young, hungry coach, and I was over here coaching, and I was going to every Euro League game, and every watching everything, and Final Four this, and Final Four that, and I'd go back in the summer, and I'd, I'd had, I had like two friends in the NBA, right? And I'd argue with them, why aren't you guys fouling? That's, that's a foul, foul, the foul, they do it. And they would be like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Yeah, foul. I'm like, foul. And now what is the NBA doing? They're doing it too. The NBA does the, the in fact, they had to change a rule this year, right? Right. I, I, I think, I mean, I don't love it, right? I don't love it because I think the flow of the game should continue. There's not enough flow, right? So I think teams should get better at transition defense, and you should let those somehow let those plays go on, Mr. Referee. We got to penalize them, right? Head of the referees is down here. Did you know that? Yeah. Penalize them for that. We got to penalize them for flopping, hooking on arms, and they'll stop it. Like they'll stop it if you take a hard line on it. They'll stop it, and I wish I wish they would because I don't. I think that. When a, a small player gets trapped down low against a big player and he just wraps him up to, right, make him take it out of bounds, I think you should have to play him. Tough up and play him. Try to strip it. Try to push him. Man, I, I got two 5'10 guys, Fred Van Fleet and Kyle Lowry, fight with everybody except for LeBron. <laughs> okay? Anyway, you got a question? No? We good? Okay. Anybody else real quick or not? Yep, we got one over here. Okay, go ahead. I got one video I want to show you too before we go, okay? At the end, I got one little video. I think it's, I think it's three or four minutes long. We'll just show some of it <clears throat> just to get back to the... Uh, hi, Coach. Hi. Uh, in the first session, you showed uh, the different strategies you would do based on limited time left like yes. at the end yes. of the game. And my question would be in regards to game adjustments is how often do you change that based on who you're playing? Um, 
if you're up three but you're playing a team that shoots a lot of three pointers or up two but playing a dominant center. Um, okay. Um, I would say that that stuff I showed you there would be a kind of a philosophical base. Like if you, if you ask me a question, coach, tie game, your ball right here, 14 seconds to go, what are you going to do? I'd say, well, we're going to run line to get it in. We're going to spread the floor. We're going to get to five on a dice. We're going to hold the ball till the last, until we shoot. The buzzer's going to go off in the air. That would be, I, I would tell you, that's what we're going to do. Okay? Now, would there be a situation, that's pretty hard, that's pretty hard, fast, like philosophical thing. If you ask me, we're up three points, and we're playing against a really good three-point shooting team. Uh, are we going to foul? Are we going to, you know, all those kind of things. I think it all has to come in there. I just think there's so many little things that, like, can make a difference. Like the fouling up 3-1. I don't know. Sometimes all my big guys are fouled out. And do I really want to, you know, like, have to try to get a rebound at a free throw? You know, there's I'm, – I'm not coming up with any great examples for you, but I'm kind of giving you some decent ones that may change what we do for sure. And – Maybe the guys I have in, what can they execute? That's a big one, right? That's a big one. I think later I'm getting to some end-of-game plays and stuff, and um, that is like usually there's the five guys you want out there, like pretty strict five guys. But what happens? Somebody's hurt, somebody's sick, somebody's in foul trouble, and just like the Kawhi shot, four guys were in four different spots than they normally are. But usually... We have this play, but we have to be able to adjust on the fly depending on what our issues of the night are. Yep. Okay. I just want to show this one. It's not, it's not, uh, we ready? I think it's a different one though. Hang on just a second. I just wanted, I just wanted, I found this one uh, from earlier, so I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to show this, just kind of, okay, um, can we make this one bigger? I'll just, show, I'll just show a couple minutes of this. And this is just a, um, again, this is part of my night before the season starts presentation. And it's usually fun, right? We, you saw the one video with Thelonious Monk, and this one here should, is just, again, this last year was the first time we went to Eagles. So this was the kind of selling point to the team for the Eagles. We ready? You're doing it. You're becoming mighty. Come on, guys. No, ain't no pain. Ain't no gain. I don't hear it. What is it? Come on. Now, Jackie, come on. Keep on sweating. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Look who's finally ready to play. <laughs>
10 right there. Yep. Okay. So that that was um, clap for those guys. That was kind of cool, right? Give those guys a round of applause. So that was again. Th last year was the first year we introduced that. So that was all of our guys there. And then the next part of this video, you just saw um, one of our other players. We, we didn't have any clips from them. They haven't played for us yet. They were they were new signees. So we went and found some of them playing good defense right to show them like this is who we are and now we already saw you can do this so bring it bring it with you you know now that you've joined us right and I just wanted to show that again like like changing defenses and all that stuff is cool but there's like some really solid principle things that we demand that are even like they're more important I think you know that so building the foundational things of what you really believe in selling those, charting those, holding your players accountable for those are really what defense is all about. Thank you for your attention. And your questions. And I'll see you all again in about 12 minutes. See you all again in about 12 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. Two hours? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.